Compound schedules. Welcome back. We've been talking about compound schedules. We've talked about them before. We'll probably talk about them again. We'll talk about them repeatedly. We'll talk about them with other things, which really make them compound. Anyway, so compound schedules, the most basic one that you need to know about um, is concurrent. And here's the easiest way to remember concurrent schedules. Einstein really laid down the law using concurrent schedules. <laughs> Matching law, that is. <laughs> sorry, behavior analysis jokes. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. At home, my wife, I mean, as you might imagine, I do quite a few dad jokes. It gets really dirty around the house when I do science-type dad jokes. And that's one of them. So I completely apologize. Just understand that this is what life is like at PsychCore. Just imagine dad jokes with a brain. So, no, with, I'm sorry, with science. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> um, any other dad watching? I really didn't intend for that. Um, see, you never know what's going to come out here. It's like, uh, <coughs> doesn't mean we're right. <laughs> uh, maybe it does. Anyway, no, concurrent schedules. It's really simple. It's a, it's a really cool procedure for studying choice. Uh, what is a concurrent schedule? <laughs> there's a schedule over here. And there's a schedule over here. It doesn't necessarily, they could be this way, they could be this way, they could be this way, it doesn't really matter. The point is, is that you have two alternatives. They are different schedules. And the amount of time you spend on one schedule versus the other can be recorded. And when you record that, it happens to develop something, and we describe that in gross detail. Hernstein called it the generalized matching law is what we can do to describe your behavior um, about what's going on with regard to your choices. So concurrent schedules, it's literally you've got an, an alternative. What are you going to do? And you got an FR5 and a VR10, or an FI5 and a VI7. I don't know, VR, VI, but that's, the point is that you just have a simple schedule and you're going to compare it to another simple schedule and you're going to see what the organism does. That's it, right? So if we happen to track all those details, what you end up with over time is the matching law, and we can actually predict how much time people are going to spend on either alternative, depending on the amount of reinforcement that you earn for both. And when you match your amount of responding to the amount of reinforcement you get, we call that matching, right? Um, and there's the fun generalized matching law. There's more to it than that. I promise we can get into amelioration and maximization and, blah, 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 and, and overmatching and undermatching and all these crazy things that go with matching law, which we are going to save for another time. But just know that concurrent schedules are a common tool for studying choice. And that's key. Thanks, Einstein. Go!